First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. All right, peace, peace. We're back with the Dr. Aline Obey show once again. Um, tonight's discussion is going to be on astral travel, soul travel, life after death, or immortality. But what we're going to get into basically is the science of the seven heavens. In Oda Kawan, it speaks of the seven heavens. Um, the seven heavens, according to the Rosicrucians um, in the cult society, um, breaks down that you have the physical plane, the plane of force, which is the ethereal plane, the astral plane, which is the emotional plane, the mental plane, the causal plane, the spiritual plane, and the soul plane. Those are the seven planes of existence. Now, those planes are holographic such as um, when we speak of hologram, we're talking about the fact that they use aspects of light and the power of the mind, consciousness, in which that makes what you want into a reality or molds and shapes the elements into what you um, use your senses. On this earthly plane, of course, you use your five senses, touch, taste, smell, hearing, seeing, and taste. Um, of course, there are higher sensors, uh, extrasensory perception, or higher sensory perceptions of powers for each one. For example, um, sight chemistry would be that of touch. Clairvoyance would be that of sight. The audience would be that of hearing. Um, clear sentience would be that of smelling. And clear guessance would be that of um, taste. So there are higher perce- um, perceptions. And all of them is based actually on one sense, which is um, the extension of feeling. All right? That's what this really based on. Now, what we also have to understand is that 
scientifically it's been reported with the curly and camera that you can actually see the imprint of the aura or light around the physical body. So this is something which that has been established for science is concerned. Scientists have also weighed the body at the point of death, and they found that nearly 70 grams of weight is different. What that means is, is that the individual weighed more before death and after death. Um, there were 70 grams of energy in which that was no longer there. Scientists have speculated that the 70 grams is what we would refer to as um, the breath or the soul, all right? Master Sanyata Saraswati, Grand Master Sanyata Saraswati, he teaches that, that the soul is the breath of life because your whole experience is sketched upon your inhale and exhale, which symbolically is centrifugal and centripetal force, push and pull, in and out. And this is what they're actually talking about. So we have to really um, understand, you know, what's taking place. Now, when you're dealing with astral travel, um, which is um, one of the plain things that we spoke about, remember we said the physical the plane of force, which is the ethereal, and then you have the astral. Now, which is the emotional. Now, the thing in which that you have to understand is that astral plane is possible from the solar plexus. And when you have an activated solar plexus, then you're able to astral plane or go into the astral plane. The word astral means star. It's known as the star plane. Right? So, um, on that plane, this is also similar to the plane of the dream world that you go to at night. And they say that your soul comes out of your body and which that allows for you to go into another plane of existence. That plane of existence is known as the dream world or the um, astral plane. And it is at that aspect that you have the ability in order to, um, if you are lucid in this dream, you can actually change up events and make things the way you want to on the physical because the astral plane um, is just like rain when it falls down um, from the clouds from condensation. It touches physically. Well, that's the same thing with the astral plane. The astral plane is energy, and it can be manipulated while they're on the astral plane to change up conditions. All right, you can lessen your age. You're on the astral plane. You can... Um, in this ease on the astral plane, you know, all types of things you can do um, if you're conscious and lucid in the dream world. You can change those things up. These are the things that we must learn how to do. All right? So another science is, is that on the astral plane, um, I would say some of the good books in order to get actually is um by Colonel Powell. The name of the book is called Astral Plane, and also the Etheric Plane. Excellent books. Um, get those books by um author. I think it's Colonel Arthur Powell. So oh, excellent books. All right. Um, the Astral Plane, um, also by um, the Yoga Rama Chakra um, Foundation of Society. 
he wrote a book on the astral plane also. So these are some excellent, excellent books in order to get and wish that uh, help you have a great understanding, understanding um, of what's actually taking place there. Now, astral travel is different than soul travel. Soul travel comes from activation of the crown chakra. Astral travel comes from the activation of the solar plexus. So soul travel is higher. In astral travel, you're relegated to only the astral plane. That's the only plane that you can move on. However, in soul travel, you can move on all planes, from the physical to the soul. So you can move on all seven of those planes of existence, as we spoke about earlier. All right. Now, oftentimes when you soul travel and you come up out the top of your head, you hear like a popping noise. All right. That is you actually popping from out of your out of what is known as your Fernelia, a Fernelli, all right, which is known as the um, soft portion in the head as a baby or a child. You used to have a soft head as a child at the top of the head. That is where the soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland at, and the soul um, of the name in the Metuneta. Um, is known as Osa. The sleeping soul is known as Osa. The awakened soul is known as Heru. So whenever you read about Osa and Heru, this is actually what you're talking about, is the state of the soul. Okay? Now, the soul is actually not feminine nor masculine in a sense. It has more so feminine components. Man, we're not talking about as far as in like gender in that terminology. All right? What we mean is is that it's like it's androgynous. All right? But it has been labeled as masculine in that regard with Heru. But Heru is not a actual male. Heru means light. Even also means light. It deals with aspects of time, the master of time and space. This is why Heru becomes Horus. And Horus becomes ours. And um, also becomes Aser, which is one of the um, five prescribed times within Islam. Aser is also one of the months um, in the Jewish or Hebrew calendar, which deals with aspects of time. So you have to understand this is actually what you're talking about, the master of time and space, the controller of the Maya. The matrix, all right, is actually what you're actually talking about here. So when we also look at the fact of the ability in order to soul travel, um, there's certain aspects that you must conquer before you can actually do so. In particular, you must be able to conquer your lower self. We've spoken about this before, in which that the lower self is symbolic to the devil within you. Your lust, greed, jealousy, and envy, those types of things must be conquered within yourself before you can raise. All of those attributes are derived from fear. Fear is actually the only emotion in its various forms of the lower nature. Just like love, and there's many attributes from the higher nature or the higher self. So in order to be able to soul travel, 
you must conquer those lower attributes of yourself. Within the nation of God's nerve teachings, um, as well as also within the one, uh, which known as the 120, as well as also within the student enrollment. Um, in particular, in the nation of God's nerve and the justice lessons, we found why must Muhammad or any Muslim murder the devil? What is the duty of each Muslim in regards to the four devils? Well, those four devils symbolize the four lower chakras, which is similar to the heart, the solar plexus, the navel, and the genital, or the root base chakra. Those four attributes of yourself must be murdered. In other words, must be conquered. And then once you raise it into your immortal body, which is your throat, third eye, and crown, then you're able to go outside properly of yourself. That is with the activation of the Kundalini energy, opening and activating each of those particular areas and doorways called conscious centers, melanin centers, endocrine glands, the which that um, give you the proper harmonial balance, the ones that give you access to... Um, the very gates of consciousness. Okay? So this is something else in which that we have to understand. Now, we spoke about 70 grams of weight in which that is different from life and death. Scientists have also found out that just the death of the physical body that there is a release of electrons from the physical body. And those electrons, if you get the book, Hulk, written by, um, the introduction was by Hiru Samaj, who's the husband of Queen Afua, and Brother Amin. Brother Amin speaks about the various heavens. In which day he speaks about the heaven in particular, in which that our ancestors go to after the leaving of the physical body, is the ionosphere. Is the ionosphere. And in the ionosphere, he states that it's like a mirror, that everything in which that is here on earth is reflected in the ionosphere. And scientists have discovered that when they examine electrons under a microscope, the most powerful microscope, is that an electron would do a 360-degree turn. And on the 360-degree turn, it would become invisible and make another 360-degree turn and then come back visible after that 360-degree turn. So what that shows is the science of incarnation. All right? Now, in the Holy Bible, and I say it's holy because it means um, the sun book or sun pages, Biblios, um, Helios Biblios. Um, it's also uh, referred to as the Ra Papyrus or the Book of Ra, the Rise and Evolution. And you will find out that in the Holy Bible it speaks about, in the New Testament particularly, when the disciples asked Jesus, this is allegorical. But they asked him, well, whom do you think that I am? Some of the disciples said, oh, they said that you're Jeremiah, that you're Elijah, that you're one of the prophets of old. And then he asked, well, Peter, whom do you say that I am? He said, oh. And Peter said, oh, you're the living Christ. So Jesus did not rebuke them for thinking in terms of reincarnation. And then, as a matter of fact, the disciples go on, and in the next chapter in Acts, um, I think this is the book of John. They asked Jesus in the next chapter, well, um, we heard that John the Baptist, you know, that Elijah was going to return in the last days. And Jesus said, surely he has returned. And then they knew and understood that it was John the Baptist. So once again, the story of reincarnation in the Bible. So the fact that those electrons disappear after the 360-degree turn from a apparent seen state into an unseen state shows that this 720 
degrees, physical and spiritual. Of course, the physical is symbolic to the square, 360 degrees, and then the circle, symbolic to the spiritual. So what we found out, that in that regard, um, that there is a such thing as life after life, as well as also incarnation once again. All right? So, I'm going to go further in order to break down even more. Scientists have done research in which they have analyzed a drop of blood in a pregnant woman, and they actually have seen the ethereal template of the baby being formed in the blood. All right? They've actually seen the template, the ethereal template of the baby being formed in the blood. All right? So not only um, do they know that there's a hormonal difference in the woman, but it is in the blood specifically in which that shows forth this ethereal template of a child being formed, of this embryo being formed or about to be formed. All right? They have also done um, another study in which they're not just the curling in camera in which that shows the imprint um, of the things that you touch in which that leaves a auric residue. But they have also um, done research on how to actually take a strand of hair a flick of skin, a speck of blood, um, a drop of spittle, in which that they have found out that by just taking one component of these particular items, they can actually clone a whole other you in existence. This shows that the cells are actually holographic in that sense because it can actually form a whole other you of the same mentality, of the same consciousness, of the same um, expression into physical form. Of course, we now know this is cloning. So these are the things in which that has been uh, seen thus far and examined, all right? Um, You can get um, books by um, Dr. Raymond Moody, um, Excellent Information which that um he breaks down a lot of the um life after death or life after life information in there. All right. I'm also on um, Bruce Goldberg. You know. Um he has some books in which that um breaks down the information also. And I'm just giving you various books that you go and examine and check out yourself. You know, of course, you know, you don't have to believe everything that you read, but definitely have an open mind, but continue, you know, have this open mind, but you can be skeptical in the process that you have an open mind. Things that you don't agree with, keep that in your mind. Keep that at the back of the head until you can find a piece to that puzzle for it. This is how you um, begin to have holistic thoughts. Um, we want to see if there's any questions. Um in a few, but I'm going to continue building on right now. Now, um, also, let's get into the science of immortality because um, if you ever go and study the Orient or the Chinese um, Taoists, you will find that there are said to be eight immortals. All right? Now, um, you also will find out that even in um, the European um, information, the Moorish information, um, actually, you'll find an individual by the name of Saint Germain or Saint Count Germain, in which that um, it is said that he actually lived over 400 years old, if not longer. They have no documentation of this individual dying. As a matter of fact, the most in which they have actually seen him eat is a morsel of um, lettuce. But they always seen him um, taking some type of herbal drops. So um, it has been speculated that he has that he found the key 
of immortality. Now we don't know um you know exactly how much has been verified, but what we do know is that um it is said that at least over a two hundred and fifty year span that they have actually um seen him. And from the description of him, um, it is the um, he, the same man, and he always appear as um, in his forties, in his early forties. And it is said that he possibly could have been many people um, throughout that two hundred and fifty to four hundred year span. All right, so this is definitely something that we need to go and uh, research. And it said that he's one of the ascended masters. But even in the Orient, when he's talking about the eight immortals, um, it is known to have practiced the science of Qigong and Tai Chi, of which that um, is prana, or within the metal natural would be Ra, of which that is um, electromagnetic energy, or stardust energy, photonic energy. In which that we know that 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. And during solar flare activities, more than that. And right now we're going through a solar flare activity, so there's more energy falling to the planet Earth. And for those who know the science of how to absorb this energy and store it within the three particular areas known as the Dantians, um, the lower Dantian would be the lower Dantian would be the navel chakra. Next, the back of the heart. Next, um, the third eye. So you would have to learn how to um, absorb and store energy in those particular areas. If you want longevity, health, good health, even to the point of immortality, then you have to store the energy in your navel. All right? If you want um, love, compassion, mercy, then you store the energy at the heart. If you want intelligence, high IQ, then you restore it in the brain. All right? Um, which is known as the third eye. So these are the three treasures known in Taoism. And it's necessary in order to master. It's definitely necessary in order to master. All right? Then once you have mastered it, you also have to master at the same time what is known as the micro and macro cosmic orbit. And those particular rotations in the body deals with the principle of rejuvenation. Once you have stored the energy, then it's time for you to um, circulate the energy through the governing vessel and the conceptional vessel which is up and down the middle portion of the body, um, also referred to as the horror line. And you have to learn how to circulate that energy. And by doing so, um, you will begin to feel much more energy, energized, rejuvenated in many regards. All right? So this is what you must learn. And please sit up on a competent teacher who teaches you these um, particular lessons and sciences. Okay. Now, Qigong is one of the oldest forms of Montu arts or martial arts coming from out of um, Africa from the Kong people. The Kong people are South African East um, African people in which that spread it out um, into um, Asia to become known as the Mongolians slash Chinese. This is why recent reports tells us that the Chinese people are Africans. That's what they are. They're Africans. So, matter of fact, the individual, the individual in which that actually brought the information from out of the Indo Kush people, the Tamil people, was known as Bodhidharma. And Bodhidharma, um, as he went into the Orient, into China, 
and he left um, southern um, India, he brought with him those exercises known as the Qigong. And so Qigong becomes one of the oldest um, forms of of, um, movement meditation. All right? So that is the science on why you should learn Qigong. Also, learn Tai Chi. Very necessary. Get in contact with competent teachers. Um, one of the most profound teachers is Master Sun Yada Saraswati. He's a Grand Master, 10th degree, and he lives now in Florida. He has a website called www.shindao.com. EnergyArts.org And energy is spelled I-N-N-E-R-G-Y Go to his website or just type in Sanyata S-U-N-Y-A-T-A Saraswati S-A-R-A-S-W-A-T-I All right. We do not teach beginners, so you have to have, have some type of formal martial arts training in various styles or have mastered or have learned Reiki 1, 2, and 3, pranic healing. In other words, have, in other words, have some dealing with energy modalities. All right. So um, this is what is going on. And I'm going to try to go to some questions. So um, press one so that um, we can pull you up and uh, get you online on the air. Oh, yeah, we just had a lecture up in, in Canada Land this past weekend, Saturday and Sunday. We loved it. Excellent. The land of milk and honey. We was there in Toronto, and um, it was beautiful. The people were beautiful. We give a shout out to the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, the Moorish Science Temple of America. You know, um, big up to the um, Muftis. Big up to um, the Grand Sheik. You know, Iron Sheik, Prime Minister. You know. Big up to the fam up there, you know. So, you know, definitely, um, we would definitely come back again and, you know, try to do our thing and get the information out there, you know, because it's a beautiful thing. All right. Um, Call up. All right. There's no questions. But what we're going to do, continue building. Hopefully y'all can hear us. Come hear us. I'm all right. Um, we're not going to pull up the um, chat room um, um, because um, we're here um, in New York and we're trying to keep the shows going and everything. Um, matter of fact, big ups to um, Brother Taj Tyreek Bay. Um, we were just in his class and I'll be getting ready to go back to it once this is over, you know. And um, Sister Roz um, just came, so we got a chance to... Um, Speak, so I'm no doubt. All right. So let's continue on. Let's continue building. Um, Let's get back into the science of immortality. So immortality is something on which that many will tell you, such as Dr. Drew Pokrom, Dr. Leila Africa. Many have taught as being immortalists in which that they teach that the physical body can obtain immortality. And that's by simply learning how to change the vibratory weight of the physical body. So hence you'll be able to rematerialize and dematerialize at will. Being able to transform your body into a ship known as a macabre or the flaming chariot. 
these are all sciences in which that we once knew. These are actually some of the highest sciences on the planet Earth. And it all comes from the power of the mind. Scientists have found out that the average person only used 10% of their brain, if that. So that means that the other 90% is dormant. They also found that only 10% um, of the DNA is active. The other 90% of the DNA is non-active. They found out that scientists have also found out that they can only see 10% of the visible spectrum of space. The stars, the planets, the moons, asteroids, in other words, aspects of light. The other 90% is dark matter. So, this is this is is a problem. But we're going to use a ten percent of everything. That means we've been cut down somehow. This is part of the fall, right? Because remember, we spoke about before that the seven states of consciousness, right? The lowest state of consciousness is interpersonal consciousness. Then you have intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness. Subconsciousness, super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. Infinite consciousness gives you access to 100% usage of your brain, gives you 100% usage of um, the solar system, or access to the universe, gives you 100% usage of your genetics, DNA. But in order to get there, something must be eliminated, and that's called fear. Fear must be eliminated. You must free your mind, as they say, as George Clinton says, so that your ass can follow. That's what must be done. The different powers of breath help tap you into each of those various conscious states that we just talked about. The average person breathes 18 breaths a minute, which would be interpersonal consciousness. Then at nine um, breaths a minute, you go into intrapersonal consciousness. Then 7.5, life consciousness. Six, subconsciousness. 4.5, magnetic consciousness. Three, mag- um excuse me, super consciousness, three, magnetic consciousness, and one, infinite consciousness. So if you was able to breathe in for 30 seconds, breathe out for 30 seconds, which is one minute or one breath a minute, then you will reach into those areas of the brain that we were talking about. Your glands in your brain will be fully active, your pineal gland your pituitary gland, your hypothalamus gland, your thalamus gland, your amygdala glands, your frontal lobes, your whole brain, all seven circuits of your brain will be activated, your cerebrum, your cerebellum, your limbic brain, your reptilian portion of the brain, your temporal lobes. Everything will be activated. But this is part of the fall of man. After you left the Garden of Eden, which is metaphorical and allegorical, the Garden of Eden is talking about when you left the highest spheres or spheres of the mind and you relegated yourself down into just this dense level and this is what you have contended with. This is what you have been happy with. You've been satisfied with just using 10% of your brain. This is where you have been at right now. And as long as you're happy with that, you know, happy with this indoctrination, happy with the dogma which that you've been taught, you know, and many of us are, then you can expect to die. But the Holy Bible, once again, speaks about us conquering death, that there would be no more death if you go to the book of Revelation. What are they talking about? That means people will be gained to tap into those 90% areas of the brain, 90% of the genetic code. And this is going on now. Matter of fact, scientists have found out 
that a certain amount of genetics is now being reactivated. What is known as your DNA, junk DNA is now becoming uncoded, um, um, becoming coded now. All right, it's a known fact that we are supposed to have twelve strands of DNA. There's only two strands of DNA which is active within most of us. And that based on the amino acids, the building blocks of life, which we're having more amino acids, and they are building these strands of DNA or rebuilding these strands of DNA, we will eventually have 12 strands of DNA. This goes back to the Old Testament in the Book of Kings where it speaks about that God cast out 10 tribes of Israel and only two tribes of Israel remained. And then when you get to the Book of Revelation, those 12 tribes come back together again. All right? And there was different names of the tribes from the Old Testament than it is in the New Testament. So that means we're going to come back. Those strands are going to come back, but they're going to come back different than when they first were together. There's certain glands in which that is being reinserted in our body based on um, the reactivation of these particular glands. Dr. York spoke about the bad berry gland, which is... um, in the chin area, under the chin area by the entrosome, behind the, um, under the chin area in the submental area. Dr. Deborah Blair spoke about the, the talu um, gland, which is actually is known as the epiphany gland, which that is like a mound area with a hole in the center at the base of the mouth. Spoke about that gland. So these various glands are now being activated. That's why we have moved from a seven chakra system to a nine chakra system in which that Eventually, um, possibly by 2013, uh, we will have a 12 chakra system and one outside, in which that gives us 13 chakras, actually. This will correlate to the activation of the 12 strands of DNA, physical, and 12 strands of DNA, ethereal, which will give us 24 strands of DNA. Correlating to the 24 elders mentioned in the book of Revelation, also with the reactivation of the 12 paracranial nerves in the brain. So all of these things are taking place. So immortality is based on, number one, the mastering of the science of the mind. Number two, mastering the science of breath, drawing in that prana energy, and your mind and prana actually becomes one. And wish that um, with the mastering of the um, science of the body, which means I eat water and food, all right, we know that your body is supposed to be out the line. Majority of the people's bodies are acidic. Alkalinity is a must. You go back to the movie Matrix, Morpheus holds up a battery, and he tells Neo, This is all we are to them, Neo. In which that basically what he is saying is that they are being used as energy. Well, that's what you're being used for right now. This is why they always love instilling fear and panic in you so that you can release, you know, an adrenaline rush in which that they use that energy to fuel their world that they live in, this third dimension. Well, with this galactical alignment that is coming now to next year, what they have found out is that the 13th zodiac sign, which is called Officius, is moving in between Scorpio and Sagittarius, in which that in the Metronet or in the Tamarian or Kemetic or Egyptian lore, you'll find out that Officius actually is Imhotep. And Officius means the serpent wrestler. And the symbol for um, for Imhotep is the Caduceus or the Uraeus, the healing symbol which is used on um, the hospitals throughout the country. All right, throughout the country. So that symbol um, of healing, those two serpents going up, and the wings coming out at the top with the ball, the ball symbolizes the sun disk Aten, which becomes Adon or Adonai uh, within um, the Hebrew, which means Lord or Master. Then the wings spreading out from it symbolizes the activation or the awakening of the soul and 
of the left and right hemisphere of the brain and its divine connection. So it actually symbolizes the right, left hemisphere of the brain and the middle brain portion. The two serpents symbolizes the sacral nerves, which is the Ida and the Pangala, which comes up from the tailbone area, um, known as the sacral bone area, all the way up to the nostril area. So your nostril symbolizes the activation of the Ida and the Pangala. So through the nostril of the alternating nostril breath technique, you can activate those particular um, serpents or snakes. They call the snakes of Christ. Um, and once they are activated, those sacral nerves, then you can move the Kundalini, which is called, known as the serpentine fire, into the Shushina, up through um, the hollow area in the spinal column, known as the Dijit, or the backbone of Osiris, or Osar. This is where you get the term Jedi from. So now you become a Jedi master. And you have developed what's called the Siddhas, which is known as the Jedi mind tricks. In other words, um, clairvoyance, um, telekinesis, levitation, you know, um, telepathics, all of these things you will begin to start um, having. One of the um, places that you can find this information that is in the, actually in the Bible, in the Holy Bible, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, where it speaks of that I will not have you ignorant, brothers, you know, same spirit, same, you know, different gifts of different administrations, but the same spirit. And it's talking about the spirit of pro, um, prophecy, the spirit of um, knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of faith, the spirit of um, miracles, the spirit of healing spirit of discerning of spirits, the discerning of the spirit um, of, um, of uh, speaking in tongues, of um, talking, in, or talking in tongues, you know, interpreting tongues. So all of this is mentioned in First Corinthians, the 12th chapter. So these are all gifts on which that you um, have administered from the same spirit, which is the Kundalini energy, I might add, the Kundalini Shakti. And then um, as our set, because that's his other name, and as all set raised up through those um, seven caves, and on the seventh cave, she illuminates um, and activate and awaken all saw and resurrect her from uh, from a dead state to back to a ninety degree perpendicular level, in which that in his awakened state he's known as Heru or Hiram Abyss. This is what this is all talking about, all right? All these stories, whether it's in masonry or whether is um, in the Bible or in the Quran or whatever the case is, right? These are allegorical stories in which that is talking about components of oneself, all right? So um, for those that have questions, come on in and um, press 1 and um, ask the questions, all right? We're trying to get some questions going, you know. Um, so come on and ask some questions, all right? Yeah, um, we got the question coming in from caller 336. 336, you're on the line. Yeah, well, what's up, Alembe? What's going on? Peace. All right, all right. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Uh, just want to ask you something, man. Uh, I've been meditating. So I've been listening to you for quite a while, and, and like I had spoke to you a couple of times and been trying out the little meditation and stuff. And, you know, I've been having, you know, a little more vivid dreams and stuff, and and I was sitting down, you know, messing around with my name and uh, the whole numerology thing, and uh, it adds up to uh, 111. And I was trying to find out you know, a little more uh, in-depth meaning of the uh, 111. Well, it goes to three, in which that symbolizes understanding. Oh, okay. So what? Uh, so in numerology, that's normally what it breaks down to, um, is the science of understanding. Um, number three is very good um, at being an organizer and being a teacher. Um, they're also excellent at um, bringing things together, you know. So um, because of their um, ability to understand um, life and what's going on, you know, so that's what 111 will come up to is three in that regard, out. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the best books I can tell you about is called Numerology for Life. Um, check that book out. You can get online and put that one up. And which that breaks down um, 
you know, you can actually use um, that book and give you your career path, your life urge, um, your life path, you know, your soul urge, um, your career path, all of those things can be, um, you know, broken down to you in a much more in-depth um, information. As a matter of fact, um, if you need to, um, look up um, Lloyd Strayhorn. He's a um, master numerologist. He's from um, here out of New York, in a matter of fact, in Harlem. Okay, and you said his name is uh, Lawrence uh, Strayhorn? No, it's Lord. L L O Y. Okay. Lord Strayhorn. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Go to his website, and um, I'm pretty sure he has some additional information for you, and I'll break it down. Excellent numerologist, master numerologist. Okay. Right. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Mike. I appreciate that. All right. Now, I appreciate you. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. Call it beginning in 314. 314, you're on the air. Call it 314. All right. Call it three one four. You're on the air. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. How you doing? This is Ray Miles from Sam. Greetings, brother Ray Miles. How you doing? Um, lately in daydreams, meditations, mm -hmm. and dr dreams at night. I've been having, um, I guess you can say, visions of tigers or visions of myself as a tiger with wings, um, sometimes bird wings, sometimes bat wings, giving off um, green, black, and um, purple flames. I wanted to know if you had, like, um, any knowledge on any of those aspects or what it could mean since it's, like, what well, past two to three weeks has been, like, in my mind a whole lot. Yeah, well, um, of course, you know, anytime you see a cat in any regard, whether it's a panther, lion, or a tiger, it's talking about strength. So, right, okay. that's what it's talking your strength. And then it's talking about your capacity in order to use your strength in order to fly. You know, you're talking about bat wings or either bird wings, whatever the case is. And, um, of course, the flames are symbolic to you raising above. Um, about, you know, those particular areas, you know, in your life, you know. Um, you know, you said black, you said green, and what are those? Purple. Purple. Um, purple, fire. Right. All right. Um, black symbolizes supreme balance. Green symbolizes life component. And purple symbolizes spiritual um, knowledge, you know, spiritual psychic abilities. Being awakened, and then their flames, you know, symbolizes you know something in which that um, is burning. Of course, you know the low desires could be burning out, and which that give you the capacity in order to use your strength in order to soar or to fly. You know, in other words, um, getting above your animal nature and tapping into your higher self. You know, and that's what's going on right now. A lot of us are having some um, um, a lot of some symbolic dreams right now, in which that is indicating that um, with just a little bit of exercise, whether it's qigong, whether it's just some breathing exercises, or just right thought, right thinking, um, we are you know graduating. We're making a quantum leap. This is what we were talking about earlier about with this alignment, galactic alignment of Alcyon. Uh, with the um, sun and with the um, solar system, in particular this planet Earth, between now and next year, you know, what we're talking about is this quantum leap from the third dimension into the fifth dimension. And so your dreams are symbolic, or your visions are symbolic to um, that quantum leap that we're making. You know, um, a lot of us, you know, um, you know, that listen to this show as well as, you know, many others, you know, such as Dr. Debbie Blair, um, Bobby Hammond, Phil Valentine, you know, and many others, you know, um, you know, the people who understand the information, they will begin to start making a quantum leap in consciousness. 
from a third dimensional to a fifth dimensional understanding, understanding and understanding. Now, when you look at uh, the third dimension, you're talking about length, width, and height. Then when you add depth into it, which is time and space, that's the fourth dimension. But then when you deal with energy, that's the fifth dimension. So the fifth dimension is going to teach us how to deal with energy, and that's what we're moving towards, is the science of energy. Thank you. Um, I mean, thank you for everything. I'm going to definitely think about what you said, and I'm going to go back over this show again, you know, and keep on listening to it. Um, right. So I can get more and more information. I also have one more question. Um, I do ask to project from time to time. Sometimes it's conscious and sometimes it's not out of my control. But um, one issue I've been having is that um, when I enter back into my body or sometimes I enter back into my body and I wake up and my body is still asleep, um, when I'm still in the lower realms, I'm plagued by a lot of lower entities. And I've been trying different things for protection, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, do you have any suggestions on that like that? Um, before you leave out, before you go to sleep, um, um, visualize yourself in gold lights um, or either white lights and also um, say a um, particular affirmation or prayer um, prior to you going to sleep. So when you go into the dream world, the last thing I wish that you would remember Consciously into the you know, which has been passed on into the subconscious, would be what you program yourself prior to, you know, um, to enter into the subconscious from the conscious world. So you have to do that. You have to be your own programmer. This is the science of going real mind control. Is you um, mastering self hypnosis? You mastering yourself? You know, and so that's what you have to do. And in that regard. Um, that by you visualizing the gold light, particularly or the white light, I'd rather use the gold light, but you can um, try both in order to see which one works the best for you. Um, both lights repel negative energy and negative beings. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time, your wisdom, and your knowledge. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, brother. All right, um, we're getting ready to get in. Um, we got a little bit more time here, so we're going to get back into the information. Um, let's get back into the science of immortality. Um, we're going to be going into 9.30. Um, like we said, we had um, Taj Tyreek Bay's um, class, so we're getting ready to get back upstairs and um, get the last bit of that. Um, but right now, um, you all more important, so we got to you know, make sure we're getting this information out to you all um, so that you all can better yourselves and better your lives you know, and um, be the best that you can become, you know. So um, let's back to immortality. Um, your physical body, your breath, your mind, all these things have to correlate with the proper prana. Um, the reason why you eat is because of you receiving secondary energy from the sun, all right? Um, water, you know, is liquid memories, all right? That's what alkaline water is. This goes back to what we were talking about with the batteries um, that Morpheus held up to Neo. The battery has to be alkaline. This is the science. Battery has to be alkaline. When you get a fresh pack of batteries, it has to be alkaline. That's living. That means the electrical charge output is powerful. It is alive. However, when it's acidic and it's dead, there's no electrical output. All right? So that's the same with your physical body. Your physical body must be alkaline. Your body is 90% water. All right? Excuse me, your body is um, 75% water. Your brain is 90% water. Your spinal column is 85% water. Your blood is 90% water. So you are basically an aquatic being, all right? That's what you are. You are basically an aquatic being. So you have to have alkaline water and your pH balance for the blood um, and for your whole entire cellular structure and body must be at least 7.4 um, pH balance. At that level, no dis-ease can exist in the physical body. As a matter of fact, if you master the science of breath, three degree, um, three breaths a minute, um, no dis-ease can exist within your body. Okay? So um, this, this is um, what you have to master, these sciences. All right? So um, the food only... Um, deals with 10% of our genetic structure. The other 90% 
um, has to come from elsewhere. This is what we're talking about. You have to learn how to tap into the 90% when we said it's unused. Okay? You have to. This is what is going on. All right? So, um, what we're dealing with is not just um, eating because um, there's a point where you can actually get above eating and go into what is called a breatharian stage, and you become a breatharian, all right, and which that basically means that you'll live off the primary energy of the solar system, which is the sun, in which that you would breathe in um, the air particles or the um, water molecules from the air. So you wouldn't even necessarily have to drink water. But because of the way in which that they have dropped the chemtrails in the sky, um, and the reason why they have done so is to actually um, block out these energies from coming in during this solar flare activity um, going into 2012. They have done this purposely, all right? And as we also know that um, the LNA, which some say is the bitter, um, is getting ready to come through. Actually, it should be visible in the sky now, but it's going to be the closest to the planet Earth, supposedly by October the 16th, which would be the 16th year anniversary of the Million Man March, in which that you know that um, Minister Farrakhan speaks about um, Elijah Muhammad um, and a mothership. And Elijah Muhammad spoke um, awfully a lot about a mothership. This is within the teachings of the Nation of Gods and Earths, as well as also in the student enrollment of the Nation of Islam. So this is something that we definitely have to pay attention to, being that, you know, October the 16th, the closest alien, um, alien uh, will come, some say it's melanin, um, which that um, you add the um, M on to it, that's what it becomes, right? So there's a lot of things going on right now. we got the solar flag activities. we got the um, melanin coming through. we have the galactical alignment taking place, Um you know, which symbolizes the 25,000-year renewal of history and which that is called the Holy Quran, mentioned within the lessons of the nations and gods and earth, um, you know, and the student enrollment um, lessons of the nation of Islam. So um, this is all taking place right now. So we have to pay attention to what is going on, all right? So um, we're going to try to go back to the lines and um, see if there's any more um, questions. All right. Um, let's get back into this info because once again, technical difficulties. Um, so we talking about the galactical alignment in which that is um, taking place um, right now, um, up until 2012. After 2012, and which that, according to the OMAC um, calendar, is supposedly in actually October the 28th of this year. Um, you know, some go into December the 21st, um, 20, um, 2012, um, regardless of when we're talking about a 10-month span, regardless of the 10 months, what we actually need to be um, concerned with is the mastering of the science of um, breath, all right, um, and the absorbing of prana energy, raw energy. That's what really needs to be going on right now. Okay, so um, when we talk about immortality, we talk about the master of the science of breath. The power of the mind is absolute. The mind will have to first get within it that you want immortality, and that death is a disease, and that um, living, you know, is the opposite of disease. It's ease. So life is ease. Death is disease. So you want to say to yourself that life is ease, you know, that I am immortal. You will have to come up with those affirmations in some regard on which that you would chant every day. Okay? 
um, just as the Muslims, in particular the Sufis, chant or take a, the 99 attributes of Allah. You know, such as the Buddhists chant nam yo ho yo You have to come up with your own chant, you know, in which that you feel comfortable with those that you feel power from every time you say it. You can use others if, you know, you feel that power but it is best to come up with your own one in which that you feel that opens and activates your cellular structure. And by you doing so, you know, you're saying at the same time that you're becoming a channel vessel for raw or prana energy, you know. So this is what you want to master, okay? And the reason why we're teaching on this is because... um, there's a lot of questions concerning it. You know, this is one of the biggest fears of most people is that. You know, and it takes me back to what, um, you know, what um, Tupac was saying. You know, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. You know, well, it takes me back to what um, Killer Priest said. You know, the earth is already in space. You know, so, you know, if you talk about heaven, the earth is already in heaven. It's already in space. So um, is it a need to die becomes the question. You know what I'm saying? Um, They have done studies in which that they have actually taken the heart of an individual and the heart actually lived 25 years under um, electroids. You know, so that means that we have the capability of living and when you look around you you see life you know you might go to a funeral you know you know maybe once a year or you know if that so you see more life around you than you do death on an average basis unless you're a mortician of course but they got strange stories um, to tell you too in which they, they'll tell you about the bodies of individuals who are supposed to be there popping up off the table because the um, neurons and the um, nervous system is still active. You know, I mean, it's all types of stuff in which that takes place, in which they, they can tell you about what they've seen on balls of light leaving from out the body of individuals. But they have seen ghosts of the individual. As a matter of fact, um, my wife um, got a story in which that when she was younger, um, uh, she could see ghosts, and which that um, one of our brother's um, best friends um, died. And he was sitting in the living room, and she went to go tell, and she went to go um, tell her father that um, so and so and so is, is, is in the living room. You know, and then um, they received the call, you know, moments later that he actually died. You know, that he was dead. You know, but my wife already seen him sitting in the living room and told her dad about it. So he came to visit in order to say bye. So these are all types of things. I mean, many of stories, many, many stories. You know, soon we'll have, um, you know, um, individuals who can come forth and um, actually build on these types of things, you know, in more detail. But tonight's show is just an introduction um, to um, astral projection, soul travel, and um, life after death or immortality, you know. And, you know, I mean, we, we have to start understanding, overstanding, understanding that really what we want is immortality and the science of um, the macabre and being able to dematerialize and rematerialize at will. That means that's when you have mastered your physical body, your your um your molecular structure, cellular structure of your physical body. And the only way you can do that is through the mastering of the science of breath and through proper thoughts. All right? So... Um, 
these are the things that we're going to leave you with. We get ready to get up off of here. Um, hopefully you all um, enjoyed it, and you all can come back and um, be with us the next time. All right? Um, Dr. Aline Bay Show. Peace. First World Order Radio, final lead. Final lead. We are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burn. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burn. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burn. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>